Joining me now is Officer William Ball, a neighborhood specialist with our community policing unit. Officer Ball is what's called a SEPTED assessor, and that stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. Thanks for joining me, Bill. Good morning, Mark. So, what is Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design? The basic premise behind crime prevention through environmental design is uh, structure analysis, interior and exterior, uh, landscape analysis, and, and the, the easy term for that is looking around the outside of your house, your building, uh, in reference to possible safety issues, uh, lighting issues, entryway issues, anything to that effect. So basically making your house safer by some simple changes that you can make to the exterior exactly. and interior. So as an assessor, your job is to go out to a house, to a building, uh, to a business, and have a look and see what simple changes people can make, right? That's exactly right. So as an assessor, what's the first thing you're looking for when you come up to a house? The first thing that I go through uh, as an assessor is I, I look towards the entryway of a, of a building, a home, anything to that effect. It's all the same. It's a great starting point. Uh, one of the main things that we like to see in an entryway is great lighting. Uh, as you see here, we have a light that's probably what they say, approximate light distribution within five to 10 feet of the front door. That's fantastic. What it does is it shows if someone were to come to your home in the evening hours, you can look through your people, you have a great view of who that individual may be, or at a business, for instance, is in this way, they can look through their door and see who's here uh, in the late evening hours. So I'm noticing this door right here is all glass. Is that, is that what you're talking about? It's very easy for them to look out and Correct. see? Correct. I am a big fan, personally, of the glass storm doors. I think that is a great way. Uh, it's still a good, securable door. However, you have a phenomenal view of anything out in the front of your home. So you're talking about a storm door, meaning you open your main wood door, steel Correct. door, whatever it is, and then outside that you have a full length. I also like the ones, uh, the doors themselves, the inner doors, the steel door, like you said, wood door, anything to that effect, that have some type of window within the uh, door itself. They make some great ones that are phenomenally uh, safe in reference to they'll have um, leaded glass in them or something to that effect, not easily breakable that you could get through to a doorknob. So you have all the advantages of being able to see without any of the disadvantages of someone being able to exactly. break Exactly. Uh, also, on the front, as in, in this business, they have a secured lock. This also has a camera inside. In your home, I'm a big fan of two locks. You always have one for the knob. Deadbolts, you can't beat them. So with this one, in reference to uh, how they have it set up, not only can she see through the glass, but they made doubly sure uh, you have to press the button in order to get through the glass, which is great. Right there? Exactly. It says it's Please ring the bell. That's a fantastic thing. So. so for a business, you don't want people to just walk in and out. You want people to... I mean, Preferably not, regardless of what it is. In reference, this is a financial institution here. It's not that they have any money or anything to that effect. They're just protecting their employees. But that obviously wouldn't apply to a, a, a convenience store where you expect people to come in and come Exactly. Out. However, if you notice in most of the convenience stores, they have that big glass window or glass door as soon as you walk in. Right, so what's the next thing you're looking at? One of the other things is you leave your entryway, uh, I look for blind spots, blind corners, uh, landscape issues as far as some type of obstruction for your view as you're leaving your home, your business, anything to that effect. Right, well, we have a blind corner over here. You want to show me That's correct. a little bit about what, what's going on there? Mark, as you can see here, this is uh, what we like to call a blind corner. Now, in your business, in your home, uh, your garage, anything to that effect, one of the biggest things that we like to do is um, set this up in a manner that we physically can't change, change the structure and obviously it's very important we were talking earlier about why a blind corner is so bad uh, reason being is if I can have you take a step back for me and you see myself when I step here you and I can't see each other we're literally an arm's length away nah, unless you put your hand out I can't see you so come on back through if you would uh, one of the biggest things that you can do in your home, your office, or anything to that effect is we can cure this problem. Obviously, we're not going to break the structure down and change the corner itself. We can put lighting in. Um, two of the biggest stressors in crime prevention through environmental design is lighting and landscaping, regardless if it's a home, if it's a garage, or an office. So if we can, uh, if we can take a walk around the corner, I'd like to show you what the importance is, is crime prevention for our landscape portion of this. All right, let's do it. Mark, as you can see here, we, we actually have a two for two on this one. Um, as I discussed before, we're talking about blind corners and the importance of landscaping in crime prevention through environmental design. Right. Um, as you can see, you're a little taller than I. We can't even see where that window ends or if there is a first floor window. One of the problems with this is obviously lighting does not get through. Mm -hmm. um, we can actually have multiple people hiding back there in a sense. So 
in your home, you have to be cognizant of how the landscaping kind of intertwines with this crime prevention through environmental And that's all design. because of this plant right here, this giant bush. 100%. And I'm sure they did it thinking maybe, people might think putting a giant plant somehow protects them or blocks their windows so no one can see in, but that's actually hurting you. Exactly. However, there is some plants that you can get that will mature to this length. They're what we call more an obtrusive landscaping. In a sense, it would have a thorny bush to it. Uh, it wouldn't be so dense as this, so you still have a good visual through your building, through to the corner, through to a window, or anything to that effect. But if someone wants to crawl through it or behind it, it's going to hurt them. Yeah, they're not going to want to do it. Okay. Uh, okay. One of the big ones that they use, it's called pyracantha. It has about an inch and a half long thorn on it, and um, I, I wouldn't want to climb behind there. So So this is a, as an example of what you should not do. Just Correct. to be very clear, this is bad. Most definitely. And next we have something that you should do. If we can, if we can walk over to the corner here a little bit farther, we'll, uh, we'll be able to look at something that would be most definitely much better than this corner. Okay. Let's take a look. Mark, as you can see, there's a great example here of what landscaping around your windows and around your homes would be as opposed to it was in the corner. Um, as you can see, it's lower. It's below the window line yeah. itself. Um, as we shot on the other corner over there, you can see it's the same size window, however, we're missing four feet of it. Uh, one of the other big things too is I'm gonna get back to utilities. We talked about lighting. Here's a great example of what this business decided to do, and this is something you could do in your home as well, is they are protecting their utilities. Uh, it is a crime, obviously, if somebody comes out and turns your water on and lets it run while you're on vacation for two weeks or something to that effect. So crime prevention through environmental design is it, it's it's a forward thinking thing. It's it's not a it's not a rocket science, if you will. Anybody can do it. It's just walk, taking that time to walk around your home, your business, uh, and, and looking at things that just may not sit right. Uh, one of the other big things too we try to do with crime, uh, through crime prevention and environmental design is securing your property. Uh, if we could take a look around the next corner, I can give you an example of what we can do to secure your home and business. All right, let's do it. Mark, we're talking about securing your property. Uh, one of the ways, obviously, it's very apparent is, is to put a fence around your property, front, back, sides, wh whatever you feel led by the spirit to do, if you will. Um, here's an example of an, in a commercial atmosphere of truly making your business secure and a, and a hard target, if you will. Uh, well over six foot fence, it's metal. Uh, they have a phenomenal gate locking mechanism with a huge padlock on it. I don't know if we need to go that extreme in a residential setting. However, they're hitting all the high points. They had the fronts properly installed. Uh, it's secured very well at the base. It has a fantastic locking mechanism on the gate itself as well as a padlock. Some people may come to you and say, I'm concerned about getting out of my backyard if there was an event of a fire or something to that effect. Well, with crime prevention through environmental design, we want to protect that property, obviously. Right. So that would leave you the means of putting in a keyed lock or a combination lock, something to that effect. I'm a fan of combination locks. Something you can't lose something to other than the combination, but usually most people remember something to that effect. Now, this is a pretty uh, intense fence. Obviously you said it's something uh, for more of a commercial setting. Correct. And not something you're going to find in a residential setting. Most likely not, yeah. A, a fence doesn't have to be that large or that impregnable, really. It, it's, about, it, it's about a psychological thing, right? Exactly. They call it a line of determination. Um, that that boast goes in SEPTED, the crime prevention through environmental design, as well as the criminal aspect of it. It's basically putting that line in the sand, if you will. Something as simple as a line in the sand, a two-foot fence, a four-foot fence, a six-foot fence. It gives you that perception of this is this is my home, this is my business, this is where my property is. So for homeowners, you don't need to go out and spend or think you need to spend a lot of money on a, on a fence like this. If you can go out there and even if it's two, three foot tall, it's something It's something that will help. Exactly. It's it's definitely beginning to get into that septed mindset. Um, you're, you're setting up your boundaries in a sense and that's one of the big things we talk about in SEPTED with anything, with landscaping, with lighting, with entryways, blind corners, it's, it's all about boundaries in a sense. Uh, so yes, most definitely, like you said, if it's a two foot fence, it's starting that, that whole mindset. All right, now we've covered a lot of things today. Can you just review them briefly for us because it's probably a lot for people to remember all at once. It is. Um, SEPTED, I, I don't want to put it inside of a box, but some of the high points that we hit today, and I'm glad we had some time for this, was uh, especially in residential, is your lighting. Uh, the curly Q lights that everybody talks about, or the CFL lights, mm -hmm. they are such a low cost to run to turn that front and back porch light on at night. Uh, dust to dawn lighting, anything to that effect that, that 
emphasizes the boundaries of your home. It shows uh, good visibility to and from your windows or your doorways. Uh, we talked about the landscape portion of that as well. You can put in that hostile vegetation next to your homes uh, to, you know, try to forego having somebody intrude in that effect. And you still have something nice to look at. Getting into securing the property with the boundaries, uh, putting in the, the fencing, putting in the, the landscape or anything to that effect. It's just a mindset when you look at the front of your home, when you look at your garage, when you look at your business, you almost have to think, not in a criminal mind, but say, something just doesn't look right there. It's, it's, I can't see the window all the way. I can't see out. I can't see in, something to that effect. So it, it's, it's a very simple thing. And I think that we, we made a great example of it today. We took a few minutes here and got everything kind of laid out for you, how we can do it for your business or your home. All right. Well, hey, Bill, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. It. I'll talk to you.